what's up everybody, my name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're still in Angren, trying to get our bearings a bit, but we uh, cleared out a woodcutter's camp before and now we're just going to move forward to uh, clear out a few of these Nilfgaardian camps that are trying to survive between all the monsters. So let's check these guys out. Seems like a pretty standard battle, yeah, against Nilfgaardians, false hope. Nilfgaardians did their best to avoid service in the godforsaken swamps of Angren, whose waters teemed with monstrosities dealt only to exist in nightmares. Those who were unsuccessful in their efforts took at least some comfort in the fact that they were located far from the front lines. Many had hoped to survive to the war without encountering a single enemy force. The Nilfgaardians, it seemed, had never been taught that hope is the mother of all fools. So there we go. We uh, surprised them. And this should probably be pretty easy to take them out. I'm gonna try and focus on dealing damage since these guys actually have a lot of units and damage dealing units on top of that. So the Nilfgaardian Guardian Champion again, so damage an enemy by the number of your allied units. So the less there are of those, the more I can get uh, the advantage again, out of that as well. Again, so basic start, the Merian Drummer and then a regiment drummer but it's a temerian drummer in gwent so that's why i was mistaken there and then just use the um yeah let's just go with another drummer so plenty where those came from i think if i'm gonna play do i want to play the bomb already i don't think i want to uh because it's gonna weaken them a bit too much so let's just Use the drummer after we've used the Grey Rider over As here and use the drummer to get the other drummer on the same row. Now he's wasted time for one like me. And then the Rivian Sapper Pissing in the mort. Oh, that can damage the right mark division. So it's boosting itself when an enemy unit appears on the range row, so I do need to be careful. Because it boosts itself twice because of the Grey Rider now. Every turn and turn, start boost just units by two if he has armor, which is not something we want, right? So, maybe even, since we're gonna use Meave in the next turn to see what happens with that, I might as well just use Northern Wind, damage all damaged enemies by four and then damage all enemies by two, like this. There we go, took out most of the armor there, and then we can use the Regiment Drummer to place, hmm, interesting, a Slinger. I'm not gonna put him on the range row, because Cat's gonna Think boost that guy even more. They hide well. Should have done that first, but there we go, one, two, and... So summon a copy from this unit from your deck, that's fine, so I'm just gonna kill those. There we go. No more boosting from the uh, Enforcer's Veterans. And then we can use Alzu's Thunder to do the same as well, just to reduce the amount of benefits that he's gonna get. Uh, I could use me if I'm gonna wait one more turn to use her. Because I want that extra charge from the Land Connect. And there we get damaged again. So Land Connect. Every Over thing. there, then Warhammer to put whatever I want up top, probably the last drummer, so I can use him later on. And then I could do double the damage there, but I'm just gonna wait a little bit. So this boosts two adjacent units. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait with that. Could use Rainer in the next turn. I think he might actually pass. He's gonna get the upper hand. Nope, he doesn't. So resilience, that is dangerous. Let's use the slingers again. So he's gonna boost himself again, obviously, but if I use the slingers on the left enforcer, the normal enforcer, and then the veterans, we get that situation, then I can use uh, the Lance Connect to damage that one and this one so the armor is completely gone now. And now we get a pass. 
which is fine. Might as well just use the forager on both of these. There we go. 20 points. We're not gonna get boosted anymore, so we got that round. Easily. Well, not easily, it was pretty close, but he gets that, so he gets a resilience unit. So might as well just try and just overpower him in one go. Uh, Reynard out of here, maybe the Aratusa adapt as a start might be good. Yeah, let's do that. So let's start with the Aratusa adapt. Oh, oh, lady, and let her play more drummers. Then use Meave to put one of those drummers up front. So they're probably going to be in the bottom. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. So we don't want to put units on the range draw, which is fine. We didn't get damaged Left, all that much just right. yet, so Left, that's also right. fine. But we're matching his points for now. So boost out by the number of units in your opponent's hands. After three turns, on turn start, repeat the deployability. That won't be too bad, because I won't care when that happens. Then we can pull out another drummer. And then again, we get again, the again. fireman, the bomber, the straight bomber. We can put that on the back row. And then we can use the Lirian Hashtuk to give on, extra man. charges to Touch the drummers. I'm going to wait one more turn by doing that. Rah, shice, in so the, those are those Darylin veterans that keep just threatening all units that can actually do something about that. Now, let's use Meave to get that final drummer out of there. I'm going to need all my units to, for this to work. Then we pull out the drummer and put one over I'm here. A waste of time for one like me. And then maybe even another one over here. No, let's put him over here, the, the forager. Come on, just take the whole finger. Then we can use the regiment drummer again to get an arbalest out. The arbalest oh, does oh, six oh, damage oh, on oh, the oh, Imperial Brigade, and then the. The Strays of Spala, just the Strays of Spala, can actually damage the entire row over there. And that should be enough for now. Do I want to use Blizzard? Yeah, I'm going to use Blizzard now. So let's just use Blizzard. So that's the 1-1 one -one attack, so that's basically my own mistake. And then Blood is... that's a cool one. So I can get three cards that I can play, two cards that I can play. So I'm going to pick the Rivian Onager and the Blacksmith. So the Rivian Onager will go over here. And then the back Blacksmith over here next to that guy. And then I could play another Blizzard. I'm going to do that, living on the edge, right? So that's, I think, just moving units around. And that's great, actually. And then treason. Oh, uh, I think it just does this. Yeah, so they're, they're dueling each other. Okay, okay, that's fine. It's fine. Um, then I can use the Rivian Onager to do three damage twice, and that's it for now. I think. There we go. Off to the front yet again. So those are actually boosted every time they play their plate, but they're uh, starting to lose ground there. So let's just use our first regiment drummer, which is a Rivian Sapper. Interesting. So sadly, I can't kill anything with that, and it's going to be useless in a second as well. So there we go. Then we get the forager to gather up those two, and we get two charges with the energy. Then next up is this drummer. Another Arbalest, which is always good. And I think I see a war wagon behind them there. But I think I have enough Idiot. space. So like this. And then the war wagon over here. That fills up the road. Then we get Reynard to go over here. Giving us extra charges. I still have two more spaces, I think, for you. No, one more space. 
So if I pull... Yeah, if I pull a Blitz unit, it's over, but it is not. So there we go. We can use the Onager to damage... Oh, I can't only damage enemies with that. That is sad. So might as well use the Foraging now. Then... More charges with the Rivian Onagers. Uh, like this. And then this. This. And this. And let's end the turn for now. I won't be able to use Isbel, sadly. I don't think that's that much of a problem. Um, and then I can use the Drummer. So that's another Fire Row. Which is sadly don't shake that. all that I can do then. Because, well, Egg is big God, and all, but yeah, we can't do anything else. Whenever an ally is destroyed, I don't know if that actually counts if I use the drummer and just don't do anything with him. No, that doesn't count as destroying, so let's just destroy all our cards and pass, because I'm pretty sure we're going to win. Ooh, that's actually pretty hefty. How many of those does he have? A lot. A lot, apparently. A lot, but we still won. There we go. Overpowered through sheer force of will. Let's gather up the resources, which isn't much, but we usually get a bit of... There we go. Letters in there as well. Darkest nights, darkest dreams. Cheeks are split with bloody streams. Need the depth of our mistress waits. Drunk on terrors, her appetite sates. Strength she saps, muddies the head. Lures you in, kind words she said. Then swamp you enter to find your end. Rejoice for now, you've yet time to spend. That does not sound like a normal letter that should be found in a Nilf Guardian camp. That sounded like it was talking about something else. We're gonna go towards this weird obelisk thing with the face scratched inside of it first. And then we'll make our way back down towards Tuzla Castle, so that's pretty basically the plan. But for now we'll just keep heading north. A little town. The question mark. If I can actually access the question mark. Milady, our scouts report that substantial riches are located in this abandoned hovel. Along with a swarm of vermin. The floor is black with the blood of bloated leeches and maggots. Bats hanging from the ceiling and spiderwebs cover the windows. I called for volunteers to recover the valuables. None step forward. They're too afraid. Um. Ah, well, you know what. Let's just get rid of the morale. I don't really care about that, but 500 coins is always welcome. And let's talk Entering to this woman. The swamp's easy. Trouble's getting out. Okay, that's a prison quote. Entering the swamp's easy. Okay, that's pretty much the same thing. That's probably the least eventful town we've ever entered. Can we actually go... Oh, we can go over here. Does that actually lead to somewhere? Because this is not on the map. I'm going... Like, out of the map, kind of. Doesn't seem like there's anything here. Moving on. And now we have a question mark in the middle of the path. And there's a guy... Killing... They're killing animals? In the distance, Meave spotted a spindle-like shape, which soon proved an enormous, dark obelisk. It stood in the middle of a wetland clearing. Dozens of iron rings dangled from its shaft, clinking and rattling in gusts of wind. Cows, donkeys, and dogs were gathered round the stone, all tied to the rings by ropes. Their hides showed many shallow cuts, seeping blood, festering, drawing mosquitoes in swarms. A number of the animals struggled against their cords, while others, near dead, lay still in the wet, tall grass. Across what the, the hell is going on emerged here? from the woods, a handful of peasants with a mule in tow. The beast resisted, stomped and planted its hooves, perhaps sensing its gruesome fate. The queen decided to question the peasants, and soon learned the animals were their sacrifice to the swamp gods. They're all about, dearie, very close. Oh, very, very close. The toothless old woman whispered. They hide neath murky waters, can't feed when they hear the drip drip of blood. The gods look kindly on those what make an offering. So, oh wow, we can stop the blood ritual, make a sacrifice to the marsh gods, or stand aside. Do we want to stop the 
the blood ritual they're they're hurting those poor animals and i'm like a, a really big animal lover so uh stop the blood I ritual know nothing of your gods began the queen her nose crinkled in disgust but any that demand such grisly tribute are not at all worthy of reverence what you do to these creatures is savagery savagery i can't allow run it off you can replied the old shrew but soon as you're gone we'll come back as ever, we'll come back. This I know. So I must take care to leave you now to come back to. Over the peasants' howls and pleas, Meave ordered the obelisk brought down. Okay. Her soldiers gripped the ropes that hung from it and toppled the shaft. As it hit the ground, it shattered into many small pieces. Okay, that was maybe a bit too much. You but... say you know nought of our gut. The old woman's eyes narrowed. Her voice grew darker still. Well, don't you worry your head, sweetie. You'll meet him soon enough. They'll tangle your part. So a pox among you drive it to madness. Every last one. I curse you. All of you. I'm gonna call his name. Undisturbed by the Harridan's scream threats, Meave rode on. But her men whispered long of the curse. It weighed on their minds, poisoned their hearts. Each misstep, misfortune, they saw as punishment for their sacrilege. In Gernikora's name, so everybody who's played Quent knows about Gernikora by now. Um, yeah, she doesn't sound like a, a fun monster. Yeah, we just completely destroyed that because I wanted to save a few little animals. This is definitely a Witcher game. So moving back south, I wanted to check out this road across the water here. I don't know if I can actually access anything over here. It seems like I'm blocked off. Although I can go back onto land over here. But I think I bypassed a bit. Yeah, a puzzle over here. So let's check this out after I've taken the resources. Thank you very much. And check that out. A puzzle at a destroyed Nilfgaardian camp. Heavy conscience, have you heard of the monster known to Skelligers as Heim? No. It's a powerful demon that feeds on the souls of those who have committed a terrible evil. But who in Meave's unit could have attracted such a vile creature? Who of the Queen's companions was responsible for an act heinous enough to garner the demon's attention? Eliminate the Heim without any allies being killed. So the Heim is, if you play The Witcher 3, a terrifying monstrosity that isn't even really there somehow um so every turn on turn start play a copy of the last card the opponent played this unit will always target meave's leftmost unit we don't have a leader ability so loyal is useless but we damage the highest unit on the battlefield by up to 15 then boost the lowest unit by that amount damaged so i'm assuming i can start with that what else do we have boost the lowest ally by the power of the highest ally Okay, so damage the high. I think we should start with Backer's Mirror, right? Damage the unit by one, use this ability eight times. So, Backer's Dark Mirror. So now the Heim is going to do the same thing, which is going to damage it like that, yeah. Then, so he's going for the leftmost unit. Who's the lowest ally by the power of the highest ally? If I do that, then he's going to get boosted by 19, which is not something I want. And if I use Becker's Dark Mirror again, so damage the highest unit on the battlefield by up to 15, then boost the lowest unit by the amount damaged, it's going to swap it back and forth between those two units, and nothing of use will have happened. So... Let's go with the Lyrian Merlot and see what happens when the Heim does that. So the Heim does the same and that doesn't do anything because he doesn't have an ally. Okay. So now, it's pretty clear that I should use also Stunder. So that's 10 points. Like this. And he's going to do also Stunder as well. And now I'm actually stuck because I can't do enough damage. Um, although if I use Packer's Dark Mirror now, 
that happens. And if he then does the same, he just does that, yeah. That doesn't help me. Okay, let's retry this. So let's start with the Ligand Merlot. That allows me to do the Dalsbrook runestone on the Heim. Which is 8 damage that I'm going to survive now. So let's end the turn. There goes all of that. And the Cyclone's face. Right up until the moment that it actually survives. And then we can use... Back is Dark Mirror. We don't have another choice than to do that. And the turn he does the same thing. Now, I can't use Alzu's Thunder now. Because... He's gonna kill me if I do that. So if I use... Back is Dark Mirror again. We get this equilibrium and then that just happens again. So, nope, that's not it either. So if I use also Thunder on myself, on the rightmost unit. So once, so I, what I did was just Back is Mother Dark Mirror and then the Lillian Merlot. Now, if I do also Thunder on my own units like this, he's gonna do the same in the reverse order. Which means that if I now use Back is Dark Mirror, I'm gonna get his 15 points, but uh, the problem is that he will then get, yeah, so if I use the Dustbook Runestone now first, I can damage him up to uh, everything actually, because he's gonna do 8 damage to my unit as well, so 8 damage getting that back. Which now allows us with two lower units than him and the Heim. Allows me to use Back is Dark Mirror to just kill the Heim straight up if I want to select the card. There we go. And we survived. Bye Heim. That was cool. Okay, so again a combination of me damaging my own units to survive. There we go, the Devana Runestone, which is I think the last runestone we needed. Milady, we've searched the enemy's camp. The tents are splattered with blood and shields lie scattered on the grass, but there's no sign of the bodies. We also found a map tucked inside one of the chests. It appears the Nilf Guardians buried their regimental safe as if they had expected danger and knew not whether they would return. So they probably all killed themselves and I pretty much know where that is. So give me a second, I'm just going to return there because that's just to the north of here, I think. There we go, underneath the train trunk that we... Uh, Fast when we went towards those obelisks. Let's open that up. And we get the animated count Caldwell card. I have the normal one, but the animated one is always nice to have. <coughs> Your Majesty, are you well? Yes. <coughs> yes, but the stench. So there we go. Meave complaining about the stench. And we're heading east now to give you a bit of an idea. And we're heading towards a sort of fortress, I feel like. So, Gerwin's Fort. Seems like there's... Those look like bandits. Let's not... In Angren, all decomposes. Be it dead or very much alive. Rot blights trees. Seeping sores torment beasts. And the whole swamp emits the acrid, stifling stench of decay. So when, in the swamp's distant corner, the Lyrians caught whiffs of smoke and roasted meat, they stopped dead in their tracks. The scouts followed their noses to a clearing framed by a palisade. Through the gaps in the posts, they spotted a small fort. Any banners upon it? Whose do you see? Asked the Queen. There aren't none, Your Grace. Not one golden sun, not one silver lily. Okay, so let's knock at the gate. Neve gave the gate a few solid knocks with her shield. Moments later, a dozen armed men appeared atop the rampart. The one who led them wore a beard. Okay, that, that was it. I was expecting more more than that, but apparently not. Who are you? Why are you here? A Gerwin. I'm Meeve, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. At war with Nilfgaard, I ventured into these swamps. <laughs> Is there a war on? <laughs> hey, that's news. Certainly, but little concern to me. The name's Gimpy Gerwin and I rule these lands. So Gimpy Gerwin is also a card they added to Quentz that I didn't recognize. So I was assuming that it's a character from Thronebreaker. Is that so? As conferred upon you by whom? 
by me. <laughs> Angren's a good bit larger than folk think. And no dukes or emperor's fingers stand to reach its every corner. Thus, I just up and took this particular nook. Made it mine. So, his icon is apparently a chained axe, which is interesting. So let's parley, Meave. One ruler to another. At the risk of being blunt, I don't care who wins this war. But I want to be in good standing with whoever does. So, I offer you a fire at which to warm your limbs. Also, a place at my table and beds for you to rest. On condition, you pledge to me one very small thing. To respect the sacred laws of hospitality. Okay. Let's have a look, I suppose. So be it. I do solemnly swear before the gods and my ancestors that we shall honor all the lords of hospitality. <laughs> then you're most welcome inside. I don't trust them one bit, but I want to see where this goes. The fort was simple, built of logs, covered with thatch. Oh, but inside, it was warm, dry. Hot, steaming dishes were piled upon platters, the tables beneath them bent from their weight. Smiles appeared on her soldiers' drained faces, and Meave's spirits were lifted at last. Yeah, I don't trust a single bit of this. We got morale back, but... Gerwin proved a cordial host, and eagerly shared both food and tales. He'd led a mercenary band, and they'd stumbled into Angren, discovered a land unclaimed by any feudal lord. He directed the fort, then united the surrounding villages under his very own rule. The folk here are savage, defiant, he said, sipping wine. I keep them on a tight lead for their own good. Elsewise they'd slit your throat first chance they got. Late that night, Meave went to see if her mare had been dressed. In the stable, she happened on a farmhand. Recognizing the queen, the man fell to his knees and averted his eyes. Meave noticed a strange object dangling from a rope around his neck. A human hand half rotted to the bone. What? What is that? Good question. My wife's hand, your grace, stammered the peasant. Lord Gerwin caught a sneak in some grub. Scraps, really. Took her and told me to wear it. So I'd remember what happens when... When... So he's a pretty savage ruler as well. Meave left the stable without uttering another word. She went straight to the servants' barracks. In the pale glow of her torch, she looked over the peasants. All terrified. All with fresh, bleeding wounds. The queen felt rage rise inside her. Um... Free the peasants or respect the oath and don't interfere. That's again... I'm a queen. I've made my oath. And I shouldn't, I really shouldn't interfere. She's rightfully angry, but we promise not to do anything. We definitely promise not to do anything. Arrgh. I hate decisions like these. Um, but we have a few people in our company that would not like us to... Ah, to leave these guys here. Respect the oath and don't interfere. Oh, God damn it! The queen reached for her sword, but she'd taken an oath, so her hand paused on the hilt. Gerwin was cruel, deserved to be punished, but Meave would not do the deed. The queen blew her horn, woke her men from sweet slumber. She ordered them to assemble. They would march out at once. Gerwin rushed out, confused, to ask what had happened. Meave gave no answer, save to spit at his boots. No, your grace! Acob Donnell shouted. This is not right! I'll not leave these peasants to these brutes! Ake drew his sword and with one mighty strike ran two of Gerwin's soldiers through. Uh-oh! The others needed no orders and fearing for their lives promptly leapt at their Lyrian guests. Oh crap! There we go. So Egg got, got in the way of that. I was afraid of Egg, by the way, because Egg is the guy who's always about oats, and I didn't want to break it. But uh, there we go. Lord of the Swamps. Meave cursed her naivety. She should have noticed sooner the deep neck scar on the servants opening the gates, the gouged eye of the elder who tended to the animals. 
the servant girls who averted their gaze in shame. The queen's sword hissed as she drew it from its sheath. Eliminate Gimpy Gerwin. Here we go. Look at that. Well, listen to that music. Here we go. I didn't think a queen would so easily break her word. We didn't, but uh, Egg is really mad. So Egg just gets... Yeah, so Lady and Sidemen are attacked by those two uh, archers. Two arms! Boost Gerwin's archers by four in hand. Attack in on the battlefield and give Gimpy Gerwin a charge. Destroy a locked enemy unit or lock an enemy unit. I think it's pretty clear what we need to do. I sadly do not have a single... Uh, how do I put this? A single drummer. So I think I might even start with just using Blizzard and see what else happens. Um, yeah, let's do that. Just use Blizzard. And have two units fight each other. So let... Oh, I can't have... Gimpy Gerwin fights the other guys. Okay, so let's just have the mercenary fight the archer. Go back a bit. Go back a bit. There we go. And then this one. And I'm damaging my own units, but I get that back anyway. So let's end the turn. Don't like this. Um... Probably can't move Gimpy Gerwin, which is sad, but nothing we can't handle. Now let's use the Rivian Ornature. Hmm. Maybe start with the Stray Slinger. We need to have some uh, damage on the field. So one, two, and three. So we can start swapping around Gimpy Gerwin himself. So let's end the turn. So those archers start doing that continuously. So cooldown too. Interesting. Curse you traitors. You did the right thing. We should never turn a blind eye to others suffering. But we didn't really. I think just Egg saved our asses there. But I think Xavier is best used on the slinger. Fear not. We shall achieve our goal. Let's give him two charges. So that means we can swap around units twice now, which should be enough to kill most of the archers. Uh, and that is one, two, and... You know what? Let's do it like this. Two and... Two and three. There we go. Because I can use the, the sapper to kill the rest. There we go. Ah, crap. Forgot about that. But we have something else after uh, in our hand that we can use to deal with that. There we go. So Gimpy Gerwin is at half health. We're starting to lose most of our useful units. We could win this on points, but I just want to kill, kill these guys. Um, so let's use the Lyrian Lance Connect. Use God. our loyal ability, and doesn't really matter what we get, cause it's all we're gonna get. So Gimpy Gerwin twice. All damage focused on him. Don't lie, this. Now, the Rivian Sapper probably, but if we can use the Rivian Onager first, we might as well get some benefit from that as well. Let's see how this works. So there we go, we lost one unit. Awaiting your orders. So we get an extra charge. Ah, and the onager is uh, is locked by Gimpy Gerwin himself. Okay. I'm not gonna be able to kill him, I think. So I'm just gonna retry this battle, because I wanna actually kill this guy. So first off, the pitfall trap on Gimpy Gerwin's row, which will damage anything that comes across there, and we kill off the archers in one go. The Meave Warhammer and get another drummer on the field. And we boost our Lady Incitement as well. I forgot about that, that we can actually boost those guys further. Try them! Then the drummer. Again and again Next turn. And again. 
Don't lie, this. You did the right thing. We should never turn a blind eye to others' suffering. And then we can use the war wagon. You can try to win them all. Pull the won't. extra drummer, but the other one was more interesting because that was the Ligan Hashtook, so we get me. another charge. And then we can use the regiment drummer again to get an Arbalest out. Arbalests are upset. fine. There we go. And then another Ligan Hashtook, which is going to be a bit wasted, but there we Girl, go. This is not going to take long. Is it they kill? Yeah, the light infantry is gonna Awaiting kill off all the units as well. Now, uh, I'm guessing it's better to just use the foraging now on the light infantry units. Like this. That kills off another archer. Then we use Meave Warhammer. Oh, and we got our drummer got locked. So that's annoying. But the Rivian Onager then. If we can get another charge, that is, because I don't think, yeah, we can't get anything out of there anymore. So I'm hoping my uh, my artifacts are going to be enough. Arms. And a locked unit was destroyed. Fair enough. Let's put down the war wagon and a bunch of extra units that might get damaged by the archer. Nothing for now, but let's play the dangerous game and use Blizzard. We get this that boosts all our units by four on the same row. And then this one is playing two cards with one health, I think. Yeah, there we go. So that gives us more units that we can use, especially the Onager. So let's end the turn. Cursed traders. Then, need to be careful. I think I should probably go with the Onager first. Although Northern Wind isn't going to be bad as well. Let's just use Alzer Stunder first. That's 10 damage. That does a lot. And then end the turn. Sod it. The archers are having fun, but that's supposed to happen. So if we swap one of the light infantry units down, I can actually use the Arbalest to deal 9 damage on Gimpy. There we go. Use Meave to let them fire off twice again. Not that that's going to help too much, but still. Two damage is two damage. Ooh, summon three bronze units from your opponent and lock them. Don't know how that's going to help, but let's use... I think we're almost there. If I use the Rivian Onager now, I can damage Gimpy Gerwin twice. And then in the next turn, Northern Wind should finish that off. That's a lot of damage, but nothing we can. <sighs> we can not, can't, we can't, can't, can't deal with. Yeah, fuck off. Here we go. Goodbye. Northern Wind takes out Gimpy Girl. And that ends the match immediately, so victory. I wonder what the effect is going to be. As he was, Gerwin had been a mercenary. He fought hard, he fought well. Yet still proved no match for me. She knocked his axe from his hand, he fell to his knees, and she cleaved his head clear off. There we go. It rolled like a gourd and came to rest at the peasant's feet. You've your freedom back, growled me as she wiped her sword. Yet do not take it for granted. Nilfgaard is in Angren. The black clads will come here too. As long as the golden sun flies over the marsh, you must hide in the woods. It's a really nice detail that she's out of breath. Meave's force left the fort before dawn. She rode at the fall, lips pursed, jaw clenched. A stain on her honor. She'd broken her word. Apart from all else, it stung on the inside. But we get Daimerid in shackles as well, which is something, yeah. Kind of forgot to check out the other card we got. So uh, I'll do that in the beginning of the next episode. So thank you guys enormously for watching. I'm going to take a little break. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.